Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Jill with Go English Coach. So let's jump right in. Um, so aspiration is easily defined. I'm just going to throw out a piece of paper as a example here. And what we're saying is aspiration is when air comes through your mouth. Okay. So when I say these three sounds, you're going to see that the paper moves. So okay, I'm exaggerating it. We don't give you that much air, right? But we do push air through our uh, mouth. Okay, so so if you can see that the the air does move. Okay, P is probably the strongest with the most air coming out, and then T and K a little less so. Okay. So here are kind of just two general rules of when we aspirate, okay? And the first one says when a word begins with P, T, or K, we pronounce the sounds with aspiration, okay? So when those sounds are at the front, are the first sound in the word, we always aspirate, okay? So, um, paper okay paper in this word we actually have two p's um and you can see watch what happens when i say this word you'll see that the first one has more aspiration than the second okay paper 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 so I'm pushing a little bit more with that one. And then with the second one, it's a little less. So paper, paper, okay? Pan. Let's move into this is the K sound with car and can, even though it's the letter C, remember we're talking about the sound. So car, car, car. It's not as strong as P, but it is there. Car. Can, can, okay? And now we have T, talk, talk. I have to close it. It's, it's, this one is a little more subtle. The paper doesn't move as much as P. And you can understand why. With P, we have pressure because of our lips. The sound comes from here, so more air moves through, right? K comes from in the back of your throat, so less air is actually coming out in a burst like that. And T is a little farther back from P. It's at your teeth, right? So t -t -t. you can still see the paper move, okay? Um, just not as much as P. All right, so now the second rule that we have is when the sounds P, T, and K come before a stressed syllable, it is also aspirated. Okay, what does that mean? So if you have these, all of these words have two syllables, okay? Most of these up here have just one syllable. So it's easy, you know, you just push air through and you aspirate more, or you aspirate, period, okay? So when the sounds come before a stressed syllable, um, we're gonna we're gonna aspirate those sounds. So here's an example: apart. And I have separated these and put a little um, kind of apostrophe to indicate that that is the stressed syllable. So this, if the word is apart, let's just write that here. Okay, apart. It has two syllables, and we kind of split it like that. Um, and the way that it is usually um, written, like in a dictionary, we show with this little accent kind of moving towards the syllable that is stressed. So this part here is stressed. So a part, a part. Okay, so we've got these words here, attack, apart, attack, decay, and account we are going to aspirate each of those sounds, okay? So a part, remember, so we've got two syllables and we're gonna aspirate this one here, okay? So a part, you'll see with the paper that we've got a part, a part. This part is separated, it's not separated, it's stressed, okay? Attack. 
attack. So this is the stressed part of this word. And so that means we're going to aspirate it. Attack, attack. Okay, you can see it moving just a little bit there. And then decay, 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 decay. All right. And account, account. I'm really having to push it out there so you guys see it, but that is aspirated, okay? Now, let's compare this. So these ones are aspirated. So if you listen to the difference between these ones that are not aspirated, okay? Not aspirated. So let's see, I've got a couple of the apple. The stress here with this word, so these are the stressed ones over here, okay? And so we're gonna, aspirate this one. This is the stress right here. We're going to aspirate this. This part is stressed because it starts the stressed syllable. We're going to aspirate. So if it starts the stress, the stressed syllable, we will aspirate. Okay. I'm going to write this here and then I'm going to get out of the way so you guys can see what I'm writing. So with these, you have apple. The stress is on the first one. So this one is not stressed. And therefore, we are not going to aspirate it. So we've got apple, we've got attic, attic, and then we've got, let's see, decadent, decadent. Okay, first, let's go ahead and find which of the word or which of the syllables are stressed. We have apple. So here's an example. So this is a, a strategy that uh, many teachers use is we... To, to kind of show how a stress pattern um, looks, I guess, is kind of gives a visual representation to a stress pattern. So we've got apple, okay? So kind of from here is the stress, apple, okay? Apple. So you can kind of see more visually how the stress pattern works. So we've got ad addict. Okay, attic, it's stressed up here. We don't really need these dots because the, the part where it's higher shows that your voice goes up. Remember, when we stress a syllable, what does stressing mean? What happens with a stressed syllable with our voice? When something is stressed, we say it um, louder, longer, and more clearly and sometimes with a higher pitch. What does that mean? What does it mean to say you have a higher pitch? It means your voice kind of goes up, right? So going back to our list here, we've got apple. Apple, this first syllable is stressed. The second one is not stressed. It kind of goes apple. That's what I've got here, apple. So right, if we write that out, Apple, okay? That's kind of the visual representation of that. Attic is the same thing. We've got attic, okay, attic. Now, decadent, we've got three syllables, decadent, decadent. So what happens with that one is it kind of steps down. So we've got decadent. But the stress, so we've got a primary stress, which is up here and then kind of a second step down. So, de, ka, dent, okay? And the reason that we use this stair step is A, just to kind of see it, but there's other things that happen when we start paying attention to syllables and stress, okay? So what happens here, when we're talking about aspiration, we've got air moving through our mouth. So with the sound P, paper, paper, okay? So then if we're looking at these ones where we do, this part is stressed, we've got, okay, so a uh, part, okay, a uh, part. This might be kind of difficult to see for the smaller camera here, so sorry, you guys can, a um, uh, tack, okay? Um, Decay, so it's decay, okay? And a count, a count. Okay, 
So these are opposites, right? What happens here is we've got an unstressed syllable and then the stressed syllable, okay? Here we've got stress on the first syllable and then second stress or the second syllable does not have stress. And so what we're looking at here is what happens differently with these three sounds. So if the sound P, T, or K is at the beginning of the word, we're going to aspirate more. Paper, pan, car, talk, okay? If it's at the beginning of the stressed syllable, I want you to do the same thing as this. You're gonna push more air out. You're gonna say, apart, look at the paper. Apart, attack, decay, account. So the second syllable has the sound and we're going to aspirate that. Now, something happens a little differently when the syllable that has P, T, or K is not stressed. In, which is this case in these three words, you're just gonna say the sound, apple, okay? Apple, apple. There's really no air coming out, so you're not aspirating, okay? Apple, attic, decadent, okay? Does that make sense, you guys? 